Guess what? So EcoFlow has a 12 volt battery. I must say they're a little late to the show, but it's shiny, it has a big shiny sticker on the front. So it has to be good, right? And even though it's made in China, it has a different case than the other Chinese batteries. I actually like EcoFlow stuff, they do try. And it comes at a good price. Most of EcoFlow stuff price per kilowatt hour is much more expensive than this. This one's only $200, but there's not many special features that I can see from the data sheet. Now one impression feature is that it can handle 300 amps for 30 seconds but that's because this is a trolling motor battery and that costs $20 more which is pretty good typically when a battery has a good surge capacity you're gonna spend a lot more than $20 to get that much surge but everything else looks pretty typical here so we're gonna test the surge capacity and I already did a capacity test and it actually passed that just fine so before we open it up, we're gonna do the surge testing. So let's go over to that part of my workshop. So in recent times, we've been testing the surge capacity of 12 volt batteries with this huge resistor bank. But it's very large, it's very heavy, and it's hard to film on video. So I created this test station. I slapped it on the wall. We can put a 12 volt battery down here, hook it up, and see if it actually works. So first, let's test this claim of 300 amps for 30 seconds. We've got our fluke meter. These are some big cables. This is a great test to see if you can put big cables on a small battery actually. And it fits, because some batteries make it very difficult. And this battery is fully charged and we're gonna give it 300 amps and see what happens. Connect, oh, there we go. So now we're logging the data. Now we're recording and we're gonna flip this switch. 275 amps, 29, 30, 31. 32, 59, 60, 61. Oh, there we go, it did a whole minute. That was really good. Let's switch this off, take a screenshot so I don't get sued. Now we're gonna hit it with another resistor. It should put us over 300 amps. And then press record and then turn it on. Two, three, oh, nope, it's not on yet. This is a trolling motor battery so it should reset itself to like the lead time. Oh, there we go, I think it's working now. Let's turn it on. There we go, 305 amps. Four, five, six, nine, 30, 31, 32. Boom, it actually worked, 32 seconds. So it actually passed the test. It does have a good surge capacity, but it does not reset as fast as the other trolling motor batteries. It takes like a minute. Now for the final test, we're gonna do a dead short. We're gonna do 600 amps across these terminals. So we're gonna turn on all of these and it should disconnect very quickly when we do this test. If it doesn't, that's not good and the overcurrent protection does not work. So press record and then turn it on. Five, 470, perfect! It disconnected in less than a second. So it actually works. It works how it's supposed to. And that's fantastic. That's how these are supposed to work. Whew, these are hot. I need to put a fan on this thing before it catches on fire. But for this type of testing, it's fine. It will, it will be okay. So now the fun part. This one has little screws on the top. This is nice. First, we have a rubber gasket, so it's waterproof. Oh, it's a cap. Now, this is what a battery is supposed to look like. You have cell holders that integrate to the BMS. Nothing's touching each other. Everything's insulated. Everything's glued and torqued. We have conformal coating, and everything looks fantastic. But how do we get this thing out of here? Oh, it's potted. The whole bottom of the battery is potted. That makes it nearly impossible. What the heck, man? This might be the strongest case I've actually gone into. So all this black on the bottom is glue. It is potted in place. So you're not gonna be replacing these cells ever. Now if we cut the sides, we might actually hit the cells. There's not that much space. I need a new tool for cutting these open so I can do shallow depth cuts like this. Now check out the heat sink. It's not touching the cells, but it's so close. What's interesting is there's no vapors coming off of this plastic. Usually when I cut into the cases, it smells really bad, but I don't smell a thing right now. 
I'm still wearing my mask for most of this, but dang, it is very different than the other cases that they sell. And the terminals are welded. You know what? We could probably cut off just a little bit here, but there is a temperature sensor, so we can test that out. This plastic, I don't know what they're using, but it is incredibly strong. Look at that. It does not want to crack. This thing's stronger than a coconut. Did I do that? This bus bar is bent. Hard to see, but this little corner is lifted up. That's strange. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. So we can see one bus bar, but the other two are hidden under the glue. And there's one temperature sensor up here and one down here, but again, we can't see it because it's potted. But the overpressure relief valves are not obstructed, so that's good. Let's remove this temperature sensor and see if it actually works. So now we're charging with 10 amps. Let's stick the sensor in the water. Oh, it works. And it worked fast, that's good. Oh shoot, now let's warm it up. And we're charging, perfect. They programmed that properly too. So the testing was good, it's at a good price, especially for this category. This build quality is fantastic, but it is still a new product. And if something is wrong with this, this thing is glued to the bottom. You can't remove it. So if a balance cable is not connected or something is wrong, there's not much you can do besides return it. But EcoFlow has a whole team of people to return batteries, so that might not be an issue because this is a very big company. But usually it's a very big issue when the company is very small. Now even though this is not serviceable or accessible, you can easily swap out the BMS, so that's nice. And usually the BMS is what fails, not the cells. But what we need to look out for is if people get these dead on arrival and how often that happens. So if you buy one of these and you have an issue, please post it on our forum. I'll have a link below. The biggest complaint I've had with EcoFlow is their software on the solar generators. The hardware and the cells, I don't think I've ever had an issue. Because this is a very simple device, I think it should be good but only time will tell. Now I did pass all the tests with flying colors, especially the Surge. Most of the time the small cheap 12 volt batteries do not have a functional overcurrent protection, but this one works perfectly. So all around this is actually a competitive battery. For the price and the features and what we tested, I think it's pretty good. But we need to keep a lookout if people do have issues with these batteries, because there's nothing you can do if something's wrong. Besides swapping out the BMS, that's something you can do. Now when it comes comes to trolling motor batteries, which this is, the lie time has a higher surge capacity. It can do 500 amps. Oh, wait, 500 amps for one second. It can do 300 amps for 10 seconds, but this one can do 300 amps for 30. Also, the lead time is $10 more. So I would say this is pretty competitive, actually. Now, let's say you bought five of these. Think about how much current that could provide, and it would still be cheaper than Epoch battery. You wouldn't have Victron communication, you wouldn't have heaters, you wouldn't have a T-Class fuse, but for the price and how much current it can deliver, that's still very impressive. Now what's nice about this battery is that the warranty they have, I don't think EcoFlow is going anywhere. They're a pretty a big established company. If it's a small company that's been around for two weeks and they're selling 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries from China, you never know where they're gonna go. Now let's talk about the future. I think you guys need to make something that can compete with an Epoch battery, but for cheaper. So Victron communication, T-Class fuse, large form factor and more capacity. That would be fantastic. This this is a good start, but I could see you guys doing so much more with this, which I'm sure they're probably working on right now. They haven't told me anything. This company doesn't tell me anything at all about their new products. I just get this right when it comes out and I have no idea. And that's pretty much all I can say about this battery. I think it's worth a shot and I think it's very competitive, but we need to see the reviews and see if there's any dead on arrival units. Again, if you have any issues, please check out my forum. Anybody can post any problem that they wish. There's no corporate that owns it, you can complain about anyone, but you have to have evidence. So please post pictures, post your data, and tell us what's wrong with your battery, and we'll try to figure it out, or we'll make the company fix it. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.